more on all of this. Joining us now, the chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee, Republican Congressman Mike McCall of Texas. Mr. Chairman, thanks very much for coming in. Thanks for having me. You see the pictures, the, the live pictures were shown. Look at this. Uh, these are uh, armed uh, and, and obviously uh, nervous police uh, standing there outside the Anaheim Convention Center. That's where Donald Trump held his rally just a little while ago. Uh, they're uh, trying to protect that area from angry anti-Donald Trump protesters. There have been rocks thrown. Uh, there have been arrests. Uh, you see this kind of development. Uh, I guess the bottom line question, uh, first question is, does Donald Trump have some sort of responsibility to tone things down, if he can, right now, to stop this from escalating? Well, I think it reflects the mood of the country. It's a very angry, uh, angry electorate out there. I think uh, Trump is tapping into that. Uh, I do think the tone needs to shift to be more responsible so we don't draw these kind of security concerns. Our Secret Service, part of the Homeland Security Department, uh, are tasked full-time to cover him. Uh, he's obviously a high-risk uh, target at this point in time. Uh, Secretary Johnson has, has asked me to assist with the uh, convention uh, coming up in, in, um, in, uh, in Cleveland, uh, Ohio. And we are concerned about these kind of protesters being bust in. Uh, and what could happen uh, uh, there in the safety uh, concerns of people attending. Well, you think that uh, th these kinds of protests that we're seeing, Albuquerque last night, Anaheim today, could escalate and continue to Cleveland the, at the Republican convention? Well, that's my concern, but it's not just on, on the Republican side. On the Democrat side, you saw in Nevada uh, all the chaos breaking out there, the Bernie Sanders supporters. You have, you have this populist movement on both the left and right, um, and it's very foreseeable at both conventions uh, there could be uh, some serious uh, security concerns. Is law enforcement prepared for this? Uh, we are preparing them. Uh, we do, as, as was uh, uh, talked about, $50 million to each city. Uh, this is a federal, state, and local law enforcement uh, issue, uh, as well as intelligence, uh, to be able to stop threats in advance. And, and as the FBI special agent in charge talked about, cyber security risk of, of shutting down uh, things uh, over the internet. When Jay Johnson, the Secretary of Homeland Security, says he wants your help in Cleveland, what exactly does he want you to do? Well, assist, uh, expertise, advice, working with the team. Uh, I am going to the convention, and I want to make sure it's a very safe convention uh, and about policy and, and the politics and not about this. Correct about me if this. I'm wrong. You haven't endorsed Donald Trump yet, have you? Uh, I have not at this point in time. I assume he's going to be the nominee, and I have said I'll support the nominee. What's, why, why the delay? Why not jump on board the Trump train? Well, you know, I've had discussions actually uh, with the campaign, and I'm talking about my issues, national security, foreign policy issues. I think the next commander-in-chief is going to inherit uh, quite a mess from ISIS in Sinai to Libya to Iraq and Syria. Uh, what we've, we've seen happen in Europe, the terror threat. The Egyptian uh, airliner going down, a Sharm El Sheikh, you name it. These last points of departure airports. Sounds like you should have a conversation directly with Donald Trump, right? I, 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 that will happen. Why hasn't it happened yet? Uh, it's in the course of being set up. So there's going to be a meeting at some point, whether here in Washington or at Trump Tower in New York. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. And, and you have specific questions you want to ask him if you're sort of like the House Speaker. Paul Ryan, he hasn't yet endorsed Donald. He wants more answers as well. You're in the same boat. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, I'd like to sit down. Look, it, our nominee is going to need a, advice in, in national security, foreign policy. Uh, he needs advice on that issue, I think. Uh, Mrs. Clinton will tout that as her uh, strength. But I also believe it's her great weakness because she's been the architect of this failure of foreign policy that's led to the creation of ISIS and the threat to the homeland. Uh, we, we can get to that later, but uh, uh, Susana Martinez, the, the governor of New Mexico, was it wise for Donald Trump last night at that rally in Albuquerque, New Mexico, to really lash out against her because she refused to attend? She has not yet endorsed him. Look, uh, I'm speaking as a Republican now, not a national security expert, but I believe that my party needs to come together. Uh, I would advise uh, Donald Trump to try to bring and unify this party together. When we go to our convention, uh, that should be the purpose, and I hope that's what happens. All right, uh, stand by. We have more to discuss. Uh, there are a lot of Homeland Security questions on the agenda right now. Mike McCall is the chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee. Much more right after. Urgency in the search for those so-called 
black boxes from Egypt Air Flight 804. Investigators hope they'll help solve the mystery of why that plane crashed into the Mediterranean, killing 66 people. But they're also afraid the batteries that power location signals will die before the boxes can be found. Presumably they're at the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea. Right now we're back with the chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee, Republican Congressman Mike McCall of Texas. Uh, Congressman, uh, was this an act of terror? We don't know for sure. And until we get the black box, the investigation is fully performed. Yeah, they're, they're testing for explosives on the uh, both the aircraft and the uh, victims. I, I will say, just in my uh, judgment, it happened so sudden uh, and so fast. And, and there were no distress signals uh, on the uh, in the Mediterranean. You saw vessels seeing a flame in the sky, um, and it descended within three and a half minutes. That indicates to me that something catastrophic happened very fast. That sounds like an explosive device to me. The sensors went off in the bathroom uh, and a breach in the pilot's window. Um, all indicators look like an explosion. The question is, if, if so, how did it get on the plane? Did it get on the plane in Cairo with a timer device or in Charles de Gaulle in Paris? The plane earlier had been in Eritrea, the same plane, the same Airbus, Correct. also in Tunisia. Tunisia. So there were several locations where potentially if it was a bomb, and I know the early suspicion was a bomb, it could have been placed inside with, as you say, some sort of timer. And we saw this happen in Sharm el-Sheikh. The insider... You're correct. talking about the Metrojet, the Russian plane, that right. killed 224 people. It took off from Sharm el-Sheikh uh, going towards Russia and exploded. Precisely. And it's this, this insider threat. You can have the best technology, but if you have a corrupted, radicalized, bribed uh, official that has access to the plane to put the bomb uh, in the cargo, as would happen in Sharm el-Sheikh... That's, that's a real problem. In Paris, they weeded out 70 extremists. I just met with the ambassador uh, out of that airport just a, a month ago. And, of course, in Cairo, I was just there last week and in Tunis two weeks ago and looked at the security operations at that airport. And I must say there are security concerns in my judgment. The problem with that is there's a last point of departure flight from Cairo into JFK. They want to open up a new one into Dulles. And out of Paris, you got 50 flights per day coming into the United States. And you're worried about security that for those flights coming to the United States from either Charles de Gaulle in Paris or from Cairo? Well, because, you know, it, in a matter of homeland security, the biggest threat is still aviation. So external plots out of these last point of departure airports with a bomb to uh, have an aircraft come into the United States and explode, um, it's still the crown jewel uh, for the terrorists, particularly al-Qaeda, but ISIS has adopted this Strategies. It's almost a week. There's been no claim of responsibility from any terror group. What does that say to you? Well, it's significant, but it's not. Sharm el Sheikh, it took two and a half weeks before they came out and took credit in, uh, credit in Dabiq magazine, their publication. So um, I. I um, that was ISIS. You know, it was ISIS. Yeah. And the fact that ISIS now knows how to put bombs on planes, it used to be just Al Qaeda. In the Arabian was it a small soda can uh, that uh, blew up that Russian metro jet? It was. Something as small as a soda can. Something that small can blow up something a plane. That small. And anybody that has access to cleaning crews, people have access to the cargo hole, they can put luggage in or put something in the laboratory, can compromise an aircraft. To me, in terms of external operations in the United States, from a homeland security perspective, this is the biggest threat we have. Congressman McCall, thanks very much for coming in. Thanks, Wolf. Mike recalls the chairman of the House Homeland Security.